Hey, what's going on guys? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at another single board computer known as the NanoPi M4B. And this is coming to us from Friendly Arm, otherwise known as Friendly Elect. And the base price on this board is 55 US dollars. This board comes packed with a 6 core CPU, 2 gigs of RAM, Bluetooth 5.0, AC Wi-Fi, and two USB 3.0 ports. And as you can see, it's got kind of a Raspberry Pi form factor, but unfortunately we do have the CPU on the bottom of this. And they do include a detachable antenna for your Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, and this definitely extends the range. But it does kind of get in the way, but seeing how well it works with this antenna, it doesn't bother me all that much. Now this is powered by a rock chip CPU, it's actually the RK3399. We have six cores, four A53 cores running at up to 1.5 gigahertz, and two A72 cores running at up to 2 gigahertz. Now I've tested the same chip in the past and it does get quite hot, but luckily they do offer a pretty beefy heatsink that'll mount right to the bottom of this thing. Unfortunately, it does make the size and the form factor a lot bigger than a Raspberry Pi, but it will passively cool this CPU all day long. You won't have to worry about this thing overheating. As for storage on the M4B, it does support a micro SD card, but they also offer an NVMe SSD adapter and a 4X SATA hat. So you can pick that up from their website and add hard drive or M.2 NVMe SSDs. But this also supports eMMC storage. It's a proprietary storage device that Friendly Elect uses on most of their boards, and it's way faster than a micro SD card. I'm going to be using a 16 gigabyte module that I have here. It just plugs in right on top of the 3.5 millimeter audio jack. And I'm actually going to be running Android 10 on this device. But they do offer several different operating systems for the M4B, like Lubuntu, Friendly Core, Friendly Desktop, Friendly WRT, Android 7, Android 8, and Android 10. And I wanted to go with the latest version of Android for this video because by now, the Rockchip 3399 has been out for a while, we should have some pretty fleshed out drivers for Android, but we'll really have to see how it works when we get into some testing. So taking a quick look at the board, we do have Gigabit Ethernet, two USB 3.0 ports, two USB 2.0 ports, we also have 40 GPIO pins over here on this side, the same layout as the Raspberry Pi. And you might notice another little row of GPIO pins. This is actually set up for PCI X2, and that's how you're going to connect those adapters they sell on their website for NVMe SSDs. We have USB Type-C for power. I'm going to be using a 5 volt, 3 amp power supply, just like the Raspberry Pi 4 uses. We also have full-size HDMI and the 3.5 millimeter audio jack. So I've already went ahead and flashed Android 10 to the eMMC module. They actually make it really easy. You flash it to an SD card first, put it in, boot it up, and then it'll flash everything over to the eMMC. So you don't need any special USB adapter for that module. Now, like I mentioned, we're running Android 10 in this video. If everything goes well with this build of Android 10, I will do a video on Lubuntu because I'm really interested to see how it performs on this little board. The very first thing I like doing on these boards is running a few benchmarks. First up, we have Geekbench 5, single core, 267, multi, 758. Not the greatest that I've seen. Next up, we have 3D Mark, Slingshot Extreme, and luckily, this does support Vulkan, at least this build of Android 10. But the scores are on the lower side when you compare them to newer Android devices. And finally, Antutu, with a total score of 140,249. Okay, so here it is, running Android 10, and I gotta say, the user experience with this board here has been very smooth for an Android 10 build on one of these RK3399 boards. I've tested a lot of them in the past, and it's really hit or miss, but this is working quite well. And we do have the Google Play Store ready to go. I didn't have to do any extra setup. I just signed in like any other Android device. So real quick, we'll open up Ida64. As you can see, we have that 2 gigs of RAM, and I really do wish this was a 4 gig model but they only make the two in this cheaper version. Six cores, four at 1.4, two at 1.8. We have that Mali T860 four core GPU and Android 10. Now this is running from the eMMC storage and it's definitely gonna make it a lot faster. That eMMC is so much faster than a micro SD card. So if you are planning on getting one of these, I would definitely recommend picking up a module along with it. Now one of the main things I like to test here is video playback. Unfortunately, we have kind of a tablet version of Android, so for YouTube, we're only going to get the tablet version. But I do suspect this is going to run 1080p 60fps video quite well. Now we can plug this into a 4K monitor, but unfortunately, since we don't have that DRM built in, we will not be able to access Netflix, Hulu, and HBO in 4K. It'll only do up to 1080p. 
but it will work with local playback at 4K and even using your Plex account. As long as you have some 4K content there, you should be able to stream it. But yeah, if you're looking to just use YouTube at 1080p, 60fps, it's going to handle it just fine. And we do have that picture-in-picture -picture mode built into Android 10. And as you can see, it does work here. So now I want to head over to Plex. I do have a bunch of test footage. It's all in 4K, but different bit rates. And we're just going to test two here. I want to see if we can do 4K 60. Now my screen resolution is only 1080p, but I do have in-home streaming set to maximum. So we'll see what we can do here. I'll find one of these higher bitrate 4K 60 videos right here, and this should be 4K 60 FPS, 75 megabits per second. This is probably going to take a second to buffer out. Went a lot faster than I thought, and usually, right off the bat, I can see the lag. Right here, it is super smooth. I'll let it play through a little longer, but this is looking really good for an RK3399 board. Especially for a high bitrate video like this, 75 megabits per second on these single board computers really stresses them out. So we'll try one more. Now this is going to be a 30 FPS 4K video, but it's at 80 megabits per second. And this is one that always gives me trouble on single board computers for some reason. Even though we're at 30 FPS, this one usually lags a lot. And there's no sound with this one, but playback is looking really smooth. I wish I could get this video in 60, but I only have it set up for 30 FPS. So a board like this really isn't going to work out as a Plex server very well, but if you want to use it as a playback device, as you just saw, it does a decent job. Now when it comes to Android and these single board computers, I'm a big fan of the tablet version, but not the interface. I like the tablet version because we do have access to a lot more apps than we would on an Android TV version. So usually what I do is install a different launcher called Android TV Launcher. And this makes it a lot easier for me to navigate with a controller or a remote on a big screen TV. So this is just something to think about. We don't have an Android TV version for this board here, but you can install a decent launcher like this. So let's go ahead and see how this handles some native Android games. First up, we have Asphalt 9. I'm using an Xbox One controller connected over Bluetooth. And while it's not the best performance that I've seen out of one of these boards, it is playable. Personally, I prefer the Amlogic S922X when it comes to gaming on these single board computers while in Android, but the 3399 has come a long way since it was initially released, and we do have OpenGL ES 3.2 and Vulkan support now with Android. Next up, we have the Android version of Dead Cells, and this actually runs really well on this little board. I'm pretty surprised here. I know it's an easier to run game, but they've ported this from Linux and PC over to Android, and I think they've done an amazing job, and we even have controller support. So this is totally playable on an Android device like this. And finally, we have Minecraft. I've always had trouble with Minecraft and the RK3399. I'm not sure exactly what it is, if it's the CPU or the GPU but I've never been able to get this game to run at a constant 60 FPS on one of these chips. I mean, it's doing an okay job, but I did have to turn fancy graphics off and I've set the chunks to six, but when we blow up some dynamite here, it just falls on its face. And it kind of stays that way until we get far enough away from the crater zone. I also wanted to test a little bit of emulation and while I was at it I figured I'd go ahead and test that 3.5mm audio jack. I just have it hooked up to these two little speakers that I have. These are powered bookshelf speakers. It actually sounds pretty decent and it is set up for stereo mode. This is ReDream, a Dreamcast emulator running Marvel vs. Capcom 2 and I'm upscaled to 1280 by 960 It's running great here with that Xbox controller. I also wanted to test out some PSP, so we have Tekken 6 here, upscaled to 2x resolution. As you can see, we're getting full speed emulation out of this one, but for the super hard ones to run, like Chains of Olympus and Midnight Club, this just isn't cutting it. And finally, some game streaming using xCloud, I think it's known as Xbox Game Streaming Now. I also tested Stadia and GeForce Now. And with this built-in AC Wi-Fi on the M4B, it actually does an amazing job with each of these streaming apps. So cloud gaming on this device is totally possible. And I've actually been in the market for an inexpensive single board computer that could do this. My requirements were running Android at full speed and having built-in AC Wi-Fi. And this one looks like it hits all the marks. GeForce Now, Stadia, and xCloud run amazingly. 
So for an RK3399 board, this thing actually does a pretty decent job. And it's one of the cheaper ones on the market right now, coming in at $55. Though you will need an eMMC module if you want decent performance. But with Android here, and especially cloud gaming, this thing is working pretty decently. So I think it was a successful test with Android. I'd like to install Ubuntu on here and do another video. So if you're interested in that, let me know in the comments below. But that's it for this video. Really appreciate you watching. That was a look at the NanoPi M4B. If there's anything else you want to see tested on this board, just let me know in the comments below. And like always, thanks for watching.